Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skeletales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? That's right, we do. We also share true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal. Heck yeah, we do. Hey, Britt, what are we talking about this week? Alyssa, we are in the spooky season. So I figured we should bring some spooky tales. And I thought, what is spookier than driving down a dark, haunted highway? I don't, I can't think of anything. Nothing spookier. The most spookiest. The spookiest. (laughs) It's Um, a bit of a spooky niche, but I, I say like, let's, let's do it. Let's get adventurous this week. I love this idea. I was into it. And I did find some good stories. My first story, I wouldn't say it's a haunted highway, but it's definitely a strange and unusual tale that happened on the road. Um, And this one is from My Twin is a Throwaway. And they titled this The Nowhere Road. Ooh. I want to preface this by saying they don't think that anyone believes a story and that it really did happen. But no one believes them whenever they tell it. So keep that in mind. Okay. When I was 19, I owned a car. I haven't driven since because I never want to go through the ordeal ever wow. again. Oh. I was <laughs> – so it ruined them. I was driving at night trying to get home from a friend's place. My friend lived out in the country, so I had to take back country roads home. I was never a proficient night driver, so when I got lost, I wasn't surprised. I tried bringing up Google Maps, but I didn't have my 3G coverage out there. I decided that I was probably going in the wrong direction. You know, just a gut feeling. So I got out of the car to look around. At the same time, it was May, but when I got out, it was cold as shit. The weather had been mild all that week, even at night. It was brisk at the worst. The second I stepped out of the car, though, I knew everything was wrong. Not only was it imaginally cold for that time of year, but the woods below the hill my car was on was gone. It had been there just moments before I stepped out, but now there were four large houses where the patch of trees had been. The houses, though, didn't look like houses I was used to seeing in the area. They had domed roofs with a skylight in the middle, what looked like elongated entryways at the front, kind of like your classic igloo. I started to panic and called my dad, but the call went nowhere. I had forgotten that I'd lost coverage. Then I heard a voice below me. I looked down at the houses and a small floodlight had been turned on in one of the front lawns of the houses. This guy was standing outside with a dog. He was talking to the dog in this language I had never heard before. I'm no linguist and I couldn't hear him very well, but I swear it sounded practically alien. Lots of elongated vowels and chirping for lack of better word. I was dumbfounded, freaking out. At that point, I was considering throwing myself off that hill, hoping to hit my head and wake up back in my car. I was fully awake though, freezing and panicked. I rushed back into my car and drove for another few minutes before passing another car. That car though was totally not the kind of car we see today. There was a weird symbol on the windshield and lights accenting the chassis. It had no outboard mirrors and didn't make a normal sound as it passed by. I can't even describe the sound it made. Not a whoosh like normal cars. It was almost like a slithering. I think the driver noticed that my car was super different too, because as I instinctively slowed down to get a better look, so did the strange car. That was it for me. I stopped at the side of the road a few seconds after I had passed and took a lot of deep breaths. I turned off my car and sat for a long time, but eventually worked up the nerve to get out of the car again. This time, it was barely cool out and I could recognize my surroundings. I was 20 minutes drive away from home. I walked down the road a ways, around a bend, and up another small hill and could see a familiar billboard out in the distance. The problem was that I was way too afraid that if I got back in my car, things would change again. So I was determined to stay outside. I thought, just to be safe, I'll open the car door and grab the flashlight I keep in the driver's side door compartment. I walked back down the hill, around the bend, and no car. It occurred to me that after I shut the car door, I hadn't looked back at all. So maybe I had just forgotten its position. 
I kept walking back, but nope, no car. I checked my phone. It had been hours now since I left and my parents were surely in bed asleep. So I called my friend and he picked me up in the road. I told him some made up story about how the car had died on the roads going back through the woods on a different longer route back to my house. I was getting scared in the woods. So I decided to hoof it home, gave up by the time my folks had gone to bed. So I had to call him. He laughed at my misfortune and apparent stupidity and said he'd help me look for the car the next day. I led my dad and him on a wild goose chase for that car for the majority of the next day before my dad gave up and said it must have been stolen and reported it. To this day, the car hasn't been found because as far as I know, it's on the side of the road in what I firmly believe to be an alternate dimension, a parallel universe, or what have you. The truth is, I have no idea how this sounds. I've only told my wife what happened, and she thought I was messing with her. And then after I insisted I wasn't, she thought I was insulting her intelligence. To smooth things over, I gave in and told her it was just a prank or whatever, and she forgot about it. I'm sorry if this sounds too contrived. I just want to give the best account of what happened. Much love. The end. Holy shit. (laughs) I want that to be real so much (laughs) i know i know i love that he's like just has lost his car to the ether like how do you file that insurance claim (laughs) right he's got to be an interdimensional traveler right he has he has the ability I think that what I thought when he was describing the buildings, like after the woods disappeared in the buildings, like a large central like skylight, it reminded me of like Roman architecture or something with like their Ooh. impluviums, like just the way that buildings could have developed and evolved over time, like the different ways. Oh, you think ways. it's future maybe? No, or just a different timeline, right? Like something happened. True. You know, yeah. and just yeah. and maybe it's future, but I guess, no, I think I was thinking it's just like an alternate timeline and that's how houses looked in that timeline. And that's how cars looked because of some different, you know, whatever engineer wasn't born or died or, you know, something like that. Who are, yeah, whoever built the mold for those sorts of things. What's perplexing to me is how many times he got out of his vehicle. Normally, when I am scared, I am like, fuck, no, I am staying in my car. It is a safe haven. I am not like, if you get out, things can get you. (laughs) Exactly. But he's like, no, let me like get out and walk around and go explore. It's very different than how I would have done it. (laughs) Yes, I agree with that. And then he was scared to get back in his car. Like, that's the opposite. I I understand completely. Unless there's a spider in there. And then I'm like, no. (laughs) I will get out. But he doesn't drive anymore because of that. He's afraid he's going to like do some sort of parallel time travel or or uh, what is it? I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I would have just driven and driven and driven and driven. Like that's my mm-hmm. MO. I go the wrong direction for many miles because yeah. I do not want to If I keep driving, I'll end I, up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I want to believe it very badly as well. Me too. I love this. Me I too. love Good this idea. Story. Good yes. story. All right. I'm coming at you with an Oregon highway Ooh. story. Okay, 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 okay. This is from Laura. A few years ago, I was driving home at night on Highway 99 in Oregon between Monmouth and Corvallis. It was very dark with clouds obscuring all moonlight. I just reached a part of the road that traverses between two hills with virtually no shoulder when there were suddenly headlights in my rearview mirror. I hadn't seen the car approaching, but there it was tailgating very close to me with high beams on. I reached up to adjust the mirror, but at that moment, they turned the lights off. A few cars were approaching from the other direction, and as the first two passed, their headlights illuminated the car tailgating me, and I could see it clearly in my rearview mirror, a sleek black older model sports car, like something that you would have seen in a movie about cool teenagers in the 1970s. (laughs) I was alarmed that this guy was tailgating so closely on a dark night with no headlights on and was wondering what to do when a third car approached and coming from the opposite direction. 
As they approached, their headlights illuminated the road behind me, and the black car was gone. (gasps) Vanished. It was so late that I continued on my way home, but the next day I drove back out there to see if that there was a road or a driveway that the car could have taken. As I had suspected, there wasn't any place that car could have gone. The road is bordered on both sides by a steep raised grade, sort of like a hill on each side. No shoulder, no driveway, no other turnouts. I got home and posted about the experience on my Facebook page. I then had several people respond that the exact same thing had happened to them at that exact same place. In each instance, it was on a very dark night with no moonlight or any other illumination except for the headlights of the passing cars. <gasps> Ooh, I mean, all of those, it seems like someone like that's a ghost like car or something. Uh, yeah. How does that happen, though? Like, I understand like a, a ghostly apparition, but a ghost car that's just like <laughs> tailgating I feel like people for thrills driving on a dark road at night and then mm. turning off the headlights would very much be something that 70s teenagers would do. Exactly. Some- drinking the brewskis and smoking the yep. joint. Down, Mm -hmm. you know, go with 90 or 100 down the highway or more in their Camaro or whatever the hell they're driving. And then they fucking eat shit and die. And so uh, they just live a life on a loop. Yeah. uh, Yes. Tailgating. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I like this. Yeah. And that's like they get haunted. That's definitely how that happens. (laughs) Sold. Solved and sold. (laughs) All right. What you got? Oh man, because because you just told a uh, Oregon one, I'm going to tell you one that I wasn't sure if I was going to tell, but I'm going to tell you one that reminded me of you, Britt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you don't I don't I don't know if you should be flattered by that. <laughs> so, this one comes from a fellow whose friend told him this story, and his friend was a big bad like stereotypical trucker for many years like not the type of person just to make stuff up i guess he was like just gotcha. very meat potatoes like truth those sorts of things so rid of the earth kind of fella yeah salt of the earth oh Is yeah the- salt sure. grit, it, the salty grit it, it, of so, the earth something gritty <laughs> yes I agree. He's going to tell the story as his friend told him in the first person. Years ago in the late 90s, I was on my way from the house in central Texas, heading to Laredo to pick up a load. It was early morning around five or four, and I was just coming off a string of days at home, so I know I wasn't tired. I am on one of those two-lane winding roads in the absolute middle of bumfuck nowhere when I see something on the side of the road at the edge of my high beams. At first, I just thought it was roadkill, as is usually the case. As I get closer, I see that it is roadkill and there's someone crouching over the deer (gasps) carcass. I remember thinking, either this guy's taking the antlers as a trophy or he's fucking sick. As I got closer still, I can now see that this guy's eating the fucking deer. He's pulling chunks of meat from the stomach and bringing them up to his face. At this point, he stops mid-motion and looks up at me. Not at my truck, but at me. He slash it stands up, and that's when I see that it's fucking huge, brown, and covered in hair. I remember thinking at this point, oh, fuck, this thing is standing on the tiny shoulder looking at me. By this point, maybe three seconds have passed, and I'm about to the point in the road he's standing at. I didn't even think of stopping. In fact, I'm starting to lay on it and get the hell out of there. As I'm passing it, it's looking at me. Again, not at the truck. It's looking through the driver's side windshield at me. He obviously has the intelligence to know that there's a driver in here and knows where I'm sitting. As I start to pass him, I can still see its head above the hood of an old needle-nosed Pete. Um, That's an old truck design where the hood goes straight out from the windshield, known for being tall and difficult to see around. This thing is fucking giant. I remember seeing what looked like human intelligence in its eyes. It scares the shit out of me. Sorry for the wall of text, but it was a story worth sharing, I thought. 
the end. Is it Texas Bigfoot? Well, so then someone else has said that there's um that they've heard a lot of stories that are similar to this one about some eight foot figure who looks like Bigfoot with human intelligence, and they're all in Laredo, Texas. What? So Laredo genuinely is like bumfuck texas <laughs> no is it like Laredo. bigfoot country there is that like known for its bigfoots i've never once heard of the laredo bigfoot but it is kind of out in the middle of nowhere that would freak me the fuck out though like i understand his apprehension he's in a big truck too and he's still scared yes great story I can see why you thought of me, Texas yes. and Bigfoot, coming together there. Exactly. Two of your favorite things, I suppose. <laughs> Where you're from, what you love, <laughs> together. <laughs> Although, that being said, hell no, I do not want to come across that on the highway. No, thank you. Goodbye. No. Like, mouth covered in deer guts, it, dripping down. Nope. <laughs> And then looking, make a direct eye contact. Another like of our least favorite things. So the true. Number one, possibly. No, I could imagine it jumping onto the truck, right? Like and smashing and grabbing it. Like, what's stopping it? Good one. We were mind melding again, Alyssa, because I've got a trucker story for you. Yes. Not in Texas, though. This comes at you from the UK. Wait, they have trucks in the UK? I thought they all drove tiny little cars. <laughs> Apparently, they're not called truck drivers. They're called lorry drivers. Lorries. I guess a, a okay. lorry is a little teeny tiny. No, it's probably not teeny tiny. But Oh, no. Oh, it's not oh, happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go Irish again. UK. British. A, a, a we might have a, a we might have a car. A lorry. The lorry. No. My my mummy was killed by a fish lorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, tell me about the lorry, please. The lorry story. <laughs> I want to hear it. The lorry story. Do you have a lorry story for me, Brit? A wee bit of a lorry story for you, Alyssa. This story comes from we'll call him Paul. Polly the lorry. Damn it, I did it again. <laughs> Paulie, the lorry driver. I'm not going to do the accent. So Paul was driving through an old village called Bluebell Hill. It's raining really bad. And he comes upon a hitchhiker on the side of the road wearing a large coat. Paul decides to pick him up because he knew how walking in the rain was like. It sucks. So the passenger then tells him that he wants to go to a nearby town, but then asks if it's okay if they stop and pick something up at a nearby address. Paul agrees, and they start to drive to this nearby home. The passenger was not very talkative. Paul tries several times to engage in conversation, and the man just sometimes doesn't even respond. When they finally get to the address, the passenger asks if Paul will wait, maybe just 10 minutes, so he can get a suitcase. Well... 10 minutes passes and then 15. When it's 20 minutes that have gone by, Paul has had enough and he decides to just continue to drive on. He was so annoyed that he'd wasted 20 minutes for this complete stranger. So he's driving and about five miles or so down the road, Paul sees someone walking alongside the road. Lo and behold, it is the man in the large coat and he's carrying his suitcase. He's not sure how he'd gotten there walking in just 20 minutes, but Paul is still so pissed and definitely did not want to pick him up again. So as he attempts to pass the hitchhiker at that very moment, the hitchhiker throws himself in front of the truck. What? Paul slams on his brakes, leaps out of the cab, only to find nothing. Nobody. No body. No blood absolutely nothing. Paul decided that he should still report this incident to the police. He was so shaken up by the whole ordeal. He ends up going to the police station and talking with one of the officers and telling him his experience. He then discovers that apparently this particular hitchhiker is very well known on that stretch of road in Blue Bell Hill. And Paul was not the first one to have had this same exact horrific experience 
So what was so interesting about that is this kind of thing is fairly common in the UK. There was somebody who mentions a story that their dad had told and that their dad was ex-British military, which means not scared of anything, super practical kind of guy, became a lorry driver in 1975. Shortly after he became a driver, he had an incident that happened. I'll just read what the dad said. So it was about 5 a.m. on a summer's day. It was a little bit misty, like it gets sometimes in the morning, but it was the sun was coming up and it was bright. And he was heading out of London on the 8th. Three. He's driving his lorry, and up ahead was a young woman in her early 20s in a long blue dress standing by the side of the road. So dad sees her and thinks that she's waiting for a ride to work. As he's just about to go past her, she jumps in front of his lorry. He immediately slams on the brakes as he's sure he hit her, but he didn't feel a bang or anything. So where is she? A couple of cars stop to see what's going on, and Dad shakily explains, and the drivers kindly offer to stay while he looks under his lorry for this dead woman. (laughs) Dad looks, and she's not there. The other drivers look, and there's nothing. No body, no blood, no sign of anyone. They all freak out a bit and then decide that leaving as soon as possible is the best idea. He can't explain it, and he knows that she was there and that he hit her. He spent the rest of his driving career avoiding that route. I think that the idea of seeing someone creepy on the side of the road is creepy enough, but then yes. for them to leap in front of your vehicle and do the exact thing like you don't want them to do <laughs> is horrifying. Horrifying. Why, though, are all these like – I saw a few stories. I won't say several. A handful of stories that that's like a woman on the side of the road and she's either wearing a white dress or uh-huh. a blue dress. Like, uh-huh. no one's out there in sweatpants. No one's out there in, like, some short shorts. They're all wearing <laughs> these gowns. Like, who the fuck is walking down in real life or afterlife? Is this a ghost? And they're just like, hey, hey, hey Fred, watch this. <laughs> watch me fuck I- with this guy over here. Eh? Eh? Okay, if I was, like, cursed to walk the highways for eternity, oh, fuck, yeah, I would be doing that shit all the time. I'd be popping up in driver's seat, passenger seats. I'd be in the back seat when people look in the rearview mirror. I'd be fucking with people all the time. Actually, this is my new afterlife wish now that we've talked about it. To go to just (laughs) mess with people constantly. I am not opposed to that. Especially on the roads when they think they're all alone and they glance in the rear view and then I'm just like sitting there in the back and then they glance back and no one's there. (laughs) Oh yeah. That's my, yeah, that's my This reminds me of throwing an extra story. Didn't even plan to tell. What? You talking about only wearing dresses reminded me of a woman who uh, was driving her horse trailer at night. She was behind schedule. I think it was Tennessee she was driving through. She's with her sister. They're driving and they're in the middle of nowhere for miles and miles and miles. They had not passed cars or houses or anything. And off to the side of the road, they see this like young woman walking in cut off shorts and a tank top. And she does the eye contact thing with them where she doesn't look just at the car. She's looking at the driver and her, she looks at her sister. She's like, that was, that was a little weird. Where's she going? There's nothing out here. Whatever. They keep driving another five or 10 miles. They see somebody on the side of the road. Sure enough, it's that same fucking chick, cut off shorts, tank top, staring at them with this same glare. And they're freaked out. Can't explain it. That was really the end of the story. But then somebody had commented. They were like, I know that part of Tennessee. There was a missing girl there in 2006 or whatever. And so they were trying to determine. I don't know if they found out if it was the same missing girl or not. But is she like roaming the highways just messing with people with eye contact? Oh, no sane or living person would make direct eye contact um, on purpose, first of all. (laughs) So that's a red flag right out of the gates. Two... That reminds me of one story that I saw where this guy was driving down the road in his town and it was pretty late at night and he saw this fellow, Mark, that he goes to school with that he didn't know so well, but he was just surprised to see him um, because he lives like 
in the next town over. He's like, why is Mark over here? I mean, like we're, they're friendly, but they're not buddies or anything. And he decided after a minute, he's like, you know what? I'm going to loop around and offer him a ride. Like that won't be weird. I know him casually. I'll just give him a ride. So when he loops back around, no Mark. And he's like, what the hell? Like there's nowhere to go. Where, where, where did he go? And just at that minute, his phone rings and it's a buddy of his who's with Mark at a party. And all of a sudden they're like, Hey, what are you up to? He's like, Oh, nothing. I'm just driving, whatever. He's like, yeah, I don't know. We just like, I'm here with Mark and we just had this sudden urge to call you. Uh, so we, we just were wondering what you were doing. And then he's like, he told the story about seeing Mark. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Did he go to the party? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, yeah, he went to the party, and it was the greatest night of his life. <laughs> I have another story. This girl's dad was a trucker, and he was real tired one night and driving truck through a windy road pass on the mountains or something. It was definitely on the mountains because there was cliffs to the side. And he remembers... Looking at mile marker 146 and thinking, okay, I only have another 200 miles to make it to my destination. He rolled down the windows, was like keeping himself awake, doing all those things. And then right after he had that thought about mile marker 146 and doing the calculation, his eyelids started to get a little heavy. He started to do the slow blink and he must have fallen asleep because the next thing he knows, he opens his eyes and he's barreling straight at mile marker 158 and he swerves and just barely avoids flying off this cliff on this mountain pass. And when he tells the story, he gets real teared up because he's like, I must have driven 12 miles on this twisty winding road asleep And then woke up at the moment I was about to die. And I have no idea. There have to be angels. Like he has a deep belief in angels from this experience because he's like, there's no explanation how I navigated those 12 miles and why. Why, if I've slept the last 12 miles, did I wake up the moment I was about to like drive off the cliff? And if that happened, I would have never had you children because he's telling you to his daughter, I would never have your two children. We would never have this life together. There's something more to this universe. Angels do exist. Oh, that's terrifying. But yeah, how how did he... How did he make it through the windy roads? I don't know. Do you have one more that you wanted to squeeze in, Brent? Can I squeeze it in? I'm going to, I'll be fast. I'll be fast. Yeah. This is from Angela. It was April 29th, 2007. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's how we tell dates. Yep. I had just gotten off my shift as a server at the Golden Corral in Bellevue, Nebraska. It was late at night, about 1030, and I was on my way to go pick up my two-year-old son from my parents' house as they looked after him on nights that I worked. As I was driving along talking to my boyfriend on my phone, I put a cigarette to my lips and realized that I had misplaced my lighter. After a work shift like that, I needed my cigarette. I decided to pull into a parking lot of a gas station that had been newly built. Before, where it stood were just fields of tall grass, thistles, and wildflowers. Pulling into the parking lot, I'd found a vacant space and sat in my car to finish my phone call with my boyfriend. As we're talking, I casually look out of my window without a thought, and that's when my eyes caught something strange. In a parked car across the way, I noticed a strange smoky haze in the passenger side window. There was no one in this car. It sat empty. The smoky haze started to form into something. I was taken aback, but couldn't look away. That is, until it took its final form. I watched this smoky haze transform into an entity who looked exactly like me. (gasps) This thing was looking right at me. And she wore an evil smile. (sighs) I watched as headlights passed straight through this evil thing. 
Terrified that it would do something that would scare the hell out of me, I quickly turned away, immediately ran straight into the gas station, bought my lighter, and went straight to my car without looking over at the vehicle again. I drove to my parents' house, scared out of my mind. When I told them what had happened, they thought that I was crazy. I picked up my son and walked back outside to get in my car. My driver's door was wide open open. Oh, no, no, I started to freak out. And my mom said, Well, I see that, but you probably just left it open. I know for a fact that I did not leave that door open. That's it? That's it? That's it? What we don't know. We don't know. Did she get in her car and then it's in the passenger seat? I don't know. That is deeply unsettling. I don't think I'd be okay with that. I had to tell it the eye contact, the evil smile. Oh, my God. Yes. Why so much eye contact in cars? You got like the (laughs) windshield, the tinted windows. Like it's all like the last place you want eye contact or you'd expect eye contact. But what is it? Is it? It's not really a doppelganger because it's a a, like misted form of herself. Like it's. Is that like a gin or something? Is that like that's almost what the. It sounds yeah. like, or some sort of shape shifter, but I don't know. That is unsettling as fuck, and I would not be okay with that. If you've had a story about driving down a lonesome highway and seeing something strange and unusual, we want to hear about it. Please email us at our hotbacks at skeletalespodcast at gmail.com, or you can call our hotline. 302-689-DEAD. 302-689-3323. We are on all of the socials, Instagram, Facebook. We've got an awesome community on Facebook where we share our hopes, dreams, and uh, funny memes, mostly. (laughs) (laughs) Hopes, dreams, and memes. (laughs) That's it. You know, I'm renaming the Facebook page tonight. (laughs) Hopes, dreams, and memes. People will be very confused, but truly, what more do you need? Um, We have a Patreon account. We are showing never-before-seen content over there. You can join for as little as $1 a month, and that's a Patreon at Skeletales Podcast. We're posting stuff on YouTube at Skeletales Pod? Or is it podcast? podcast. I think it's I think it's a whole podcast. podcast. Yeah. It got the whole word over there. Got the whole word. Um, and where else are we? Oh, I know where else we are. We have a merch shop. I am posting up fresh new goods as we speak. I've got awesome stickers, some creepy as hell dolls. You will not want to miss it. That's at skeletalspodcast.etsy.com. Brent, do you think we should do an ASMR video uh, episode where we just whisper the whole time? I think that people will really want to listen to a whole hour of that. Yes, if you want to hear a complete ASMR whisper video uh, podcast, please let us know and we'll make it happen. But you have to let us know. Have you heard my laugh? I don't know if I can do it. I can't even hear you. That's what the whole episode's going to be. I can't hear you. Please speak up. An hour of silence. (laughs) Did you hear me? I have to I'm just gonna sleep with my dad. I don't. How was that? I don't think Brett and I can hear each other because we're whispering. <laughs> How was that? Haunt you all later. I swear, you're just moving your lips right now and not making any noise. I said, haunt y'all later. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. <laughs> This is a terrible idea. <laughs> I just said that. Unless you listeners think it's not, then let us know <laughs> and we'll do it anyway. <laughs> uh, hey, Brent, was there anything else? Fuck yes, I already said it. I'll let y'all later. <laughs> <laughs>